Heartland Highways is made possible in part by Consolidated Communications, offering customers high-speed internet, phone service, and digital TV service packages that include high-definition channels, DVR, and hundreds of sports, movies, and music channels. More information on these services available at Consolidated.com. Coming up next on Heartland Highways, we'll close out our season with a visit to Meyer's Dinner Theater in Hillsborough, Indiana. Then we'll meet the people behind the Gamma Phi Circus at Illinois State University and even take a swing on the trapeze. Finally, we'll meet the Central Illinois English Country Dancers. Don't go away, those stories are coming up next. Hello and thanks for joining us this week for Heartland Highways. Today we're back at the Down to Fine Arts Center here in the theater, which is home to EIU's Theater Arts Department. Now today's show is all about the performing arts, including theater, dance, and the circus. That's right. First, we're headed to Hillsboro, Indiana, to the Myers Dinner Theater to take in dinner and a show. This unique venue is run mainly by Richard and Donna Myers, whose motto is come as a guest and leave as family. Located at the crossroads of US 136 and Highway 341 is Hillsboro, Indiana. Some people may know this town as the home of 600 happy people and a few old soreheads. Well, you're about to meet not the old soreheads, but two of those very happy people, Richard and Donna Myers. Now, when most people near their retirement years, they think about slowing down, but not the Myers. Instead, they decided to get into the theater business. After running two other performance theaters, they moved their operation to Richard's hometown of Hillsboro. We've never been sorry that we landed here. The people in the community are wonderful. And it was like so many rural towns, there was lots of empty buildings. Now there isn't any empty buildings. That's because Richard and Donna purchased and refurbished eight of them, including two bed and breakfasts. In 2002, they had just three months to transform a block of century-old buildings into a full-service dinner theater. Together, the Myers run the business, doing everything from costumes, food preparation, and set design. Of course, then they come out with a prop list, and then we run around trying to find props and stuff. If we don't have it, we have to make it or something anyway. And then, of course, then we do the food, which, you know, we, you know, uh, do all the cooking. And so it's, you know, that's mainly my job right now is like working on the set and, and helping in the kitchen. He's the glue that keeps Meyer's <laughs> Dinner Theater together because uh, if it wasn't for what he does here and his talent, it just wouldn't take place. Donna's past experience as a hairdresser, decorator, and bridal shop owner have come in quite handy in the theater business. And I do all the costumes. Um, and I love that. See, that's where having the bridal store and knowing fabrics and things, but I love that design and it's a part of the, that decorating design comes in. And then doing the hairstyles, uh, doing those wigs, being a hairdresser, it's been very vital for this business too. The theater's central location has made it a popular stop for bus tours. Guests from all over the world have made their way to Myers. Throughout the year, the stage features well-known Broadway hits, musical reviews, and gospel music. On this November afternoon, we were invited to the opening of A Dickens of a Christmas. Based on A Christmas Carol, this production is an original work written just for Myers Dinner Theater. As guests enter the theater, each one is greeted by a hug from Donna. And when they're waiting to be seated, they can shop in the store and they like the old piano being played out in the lobby and 
Some days they'll sing and they get to dancing and it's, it's just a hoot, you know, they have so much fun. Prior to the show, dinner is served, just one of the many things that Myers has become famous for. Uh, some of the younger people think what we're fixing is gourmet cooking. Well, to us, it's just what we were raised on, you know, it's, it's not that at all. It's just down home. Some things we cannot change, like the broccoli salad or the salad dressing that I've created and Richard's rolls, Richard's buns, um, and the Swiss steak. Those things, um, pretty much, they have to stay on. But we will change the menu a little bit to go for either the holiday season or for the show. We like that part of it because it makes it very relaxed and people just sort of settle in and we prepare our food like we're preparing for family to come over. Now food isn't the only Myers claim to fame. Interestingly enough, their bathrooms are quite the hit. He likes to decorate, so when the architect was, of course, by being state inspected, he had to draw up all the old buildings too. And, Randy had a men and women's bathroom. I told Randy, I said, this is not gonna work. And he said, why? And I said, well, there's all these women getting off the bus anyway, but anyway, and I said, my wife likes to decorate bathrooms, and so that's how it is, so. It, it's fun, it, but it was, again, for our own enjoyment. Who would have ever guessed it would have been such a hit? After a delicious home-cooked meal, it's showtime. Actors are both local and regional players who try out at the beginning of the season. And our stage is not very large, but we make it work. And really, people have really enjoyed that. Not such large casts that they don't, you know, connect. As you notice, you think we work too, the cast members work too, because sometimes they say, well, who's the dresser, who's the prop, and we say, you are. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to being stagehands, the actors oftentimes will play multiple roles, sometimes as many as five or six. What totally amazes me, though, is Michael and Linnea. Have, this is their fifth Christmas show. They have performed in every show for the last five years, and they change their accents or their whole personality for that role. And I, I just think they're wonderful. They do such a marvelous job. But we, we do find wonderful talent like that. Shows are chosen about two years in advance with an emphasis on family-friendly themes. Throughout the year, there's very little time to rest because as one show is ending, preparations are underway for the next. When asked about their favorite part, Richard and Donna both agree it's the people and their desire to make them feel right at home. I spent a lot of time talking with this, um, uh, the two couples that were at table five and he said, now I hope I say this right to you, but he said, the minute I opened that front door, I knew I was gonna be in love with this place. And I said, really? now." Why is that? Because we hear that so many times. And he said, it just feels different in here. It's very comfortable and laid back. And that always makes me want to cry because, you know, we're busy running around and we miss that. But I am so glad that our guests feel that. Next, we travel to Urbana, Illinois, where admission is free and the activity is so easy, they say anyone can do it. The Central Illinois English Country dancers perform dances from the 16, 17, and 1800s. Take a look. One sleep down. Go back home and two and turn. Two sleep up. Did you get all of that? That's okay, me neither. 
the Central Illinois English Country Dancers would be happy to walk us through it again. That's their policy. All are welcome and no experience is required. But before we try floating across the dance floor again, let's find out more about what English Country Dance is. English Country Dancing is the dancing that was popular in England and Europe and the colonies from well, the official time period is from about 1650 through uh, the early 1800s, say the 1820. Um, it probably predated that and some of the same kind of dances were still being done after that, but that's really the time period, the 1600s and 1700s. Most of it is just a smooth walking step. You know, it's just smooth walking in time to music. Um, there is occasionally in some dances, in some dances you might do some skipping or uh, a couple other uh, uh, steps like that. Um, there's a few things like setting and turning single and things like that that um, it's hard to just describe what they are, but it's basically you're sort of hopping from foot to foot. But most of the time it's just smooth walking steps in time to the music. So why do people do it today? There are many reasons, but it's mainly because it's fun and an easy style of dance anyone can do. Well, I think one of the things that's uh, nice about it is the music, it's sort of classical music, and the dancing, even though you have a partner and you're dancing with your partner, you're nonetheless dancing with everybody, you know, as a, as a group. So it's a sort of a group activity, it's very social. Um, and I think dancing has become more popular lately. Um, there's a lot of different kinds that people are involved in. Uh, this is fairly easy. Um, it doesn't require a lot of footwork. It can be good exercise, but it's not super strenuous. Um, it's a good way to get out, meet people, do some things with other people, and uh, we've had a lot of uh, families coming uh, lately uh, for the last several years because I think it's, I think it's because I think it's a, it's a good activity for the, you know, the kids to get into and uh, um, a fun way to, to meet other people and be involved. One such family is the Hanson family. John, Sue, and Beth stumbled upon the group quite by accident and immediately knew they were hooked. We had moved here, um, you know, about 1990 or 93 or something. I can't remember the exact year. But we were walking through the Union and we looked in the rooms ABC and we saw the, all these people dancing, doing this strange kind of dancing. And we walked in and we stared at it and we watched and we thought, this looks really interesting. And so we tried it and we were sold that night. And I think, I don't remember how old our daughter was, but she was pretty young, about four years old or five or something. Now Beth is a University of Illinois student still enjoying the dances she learned at that young age. It's cool that I share this interest with my family. My family and I are really close. Um, and it's really cool to discuss these kinds of dances. We actually do have big dance discussions, like on the history, like if anybody you know, learns something new or learns a new type of dance, we, we like to discuss it a lot and uh, try things out, actually. Um, sometimes you can see us in like parking lots. If we're coming out of a dance, we'll be like practicing whatever it was that we just learned. I think the social atmosphere is nice, like I've gotten to know a lot of people and the dancing itself, um, the formations, you tend to dance with everybody, like in, in one dance, you see almost everybody um, in the line that you're dancing with, so it, it is very social. Um, it's a good way to meet people and it's, it's fun to talk to people who have this kind of same interest in history and dancing as you do. That social aspect, along with the simple walking steps of the dance, is what many say draw them to it. And it's clear to see that no matter what age or skill level you might be, it doesn't matter. You might go to a bar or something where you might there's a particular age group, and you feel a little out of place if you, you walk in and you've got some gray hair or something, it doesn't matter. But here in the English, it doesn't matter. There's just all age groups, all people, all uh, skill levels, and it's just, a natural thing. And then also, uh, everybody asks everybody to dance. Uh, 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 women can ask men to dance, and men will ask women to dance. Sometimes if we've got too many women, uh, women will dance. You know, one will be the lead, one will be the follow. And it's just very casual that way. There's really no, 
no class system or age group or anything. It's very homogeneous. It's rather like at church where they have a church social. It's just everybody's together and enjoying themselves and uh, you know we, uh, we're not smokers, we're not drinkers, we're dancers and we're eaters too. We eat a lot of really great food. We have some good cooks in this group. When they're not eating though, the dancers are hosting monthly dances in the Champaign-Urbana area featuring live music from the Flatline Consort. Several of these dances are period style balls in which costumes are worn. And although English country dance may not be a category on Dancing with the Stars, it still holds a place in the hearts of those who do it. I think the, the mere fact that we're doing English country dancing makes us kind of unique. Uh, it's, not, it's, not the, it's, not a very, it's not a mainstream activity, you know. Even though a lot of people do it all over the world, it's not, you know, you don't see it on, on, on very many tent, you know, television shows or, you know, so. I branch out a lot, but always come back to this one. Um, it's almost like the comfort food of dancing for me, I guess. Our last story takes us to normal Illinois, where we did something that I wouldn't say is normally in a day's work. Thankfully it's not. We joined the Illinois State University Gamma Phi Circus. Now they were kind enough to take us behind the scenes of the country's oldest collegiate circus. Welcome to Red as Illinois State University. Now that you've had a taste of what the Gamma Phi Circus at Illinois State University in Bloomington is all about, here's a little history about how this group, which is one of only two collegiate circuses in the United States, began. We started in 1929 and uh, we started off as an athletic society uh, geared towards physical education, fitness and gymnastics. And our founder, Horton, Pop Horton or Clifford Horton was a a uh, physical education professor, uh, was also a gymnastics instructor taught tumbling at the YMCA in downtown Bloomington, which also had a circus. And the Bloomington Normal area has, been, uh, had, a has had a rich history in the circus history going back to the 1880s. And so uh, Clifford Horton developed this Gamma Phi program as a way to, for young men to demonstrate feats of strength and do athletic prowess on campus. They do halftime basketball games and stuff. By 1932, the group had officially been dubbed the Gamma Phi Circus and began performing yearly home shows each spring in April, which still continue today. The circus is comprised of between 60 and 80 ISU students and staff, and like any group, they have grown and changed significantly throughout the years. We've had many evolutions uh, and our current uh, evolution I guess is that we are a leadership program and we use uh, we teach leadership skills like personal accountability teamwork um, and we use circus as a vehicle for that so uh, what you see here is a lot of students working together putting themselves into some risky situations but they can do so because they promise that they're going to do their absolute best to keep each other safe, they're responsible for one another, themselves and, their, and each other, and um, the end result actually is a two-hour family show in Redbird Arena. Becca Nimichek is a former gymnast turned circus performer who has been with Gamma Phi for six years during her undergraduate and graduate studies. When I asked her what a performer needs to be in the circus, one word came to mind. That's the word. There's a big sense of trust. A lot of people actually, we kind of interdate, so you'll be dating the same people that you do circus with, so it'll be kind of funny because you may have broken up with that person, but they're still below you, holding you, so you really do need that trust factor in there, so it's very important. And of course trust is important when you're doing acts like these. We do all kinds of high caliber acrobatics. So we have partner acrobatics, which, uh, which would be like group acrobatics and pyramid building. 
Um, this year we're going to be doing jump rope acrobatics, so we'll be doing uh, jump rope teams and things. And then we do teeterboard. We'll do trampoline, which you see behind me, flying trapeze, a hand balancing act, juggling, wire walking, unicycles, the works. And of course, all these acts take practice, which we witnessed during our visit. Eventually, the practices build up to the two-hour home show we've been telling you about. But in the meantime, the circus has a few other things on their plate. We will always develop smaller acts where there's more experienced people. And we do travel uh, and take our show on the road, if you will. We'll conduct road shows in high schools. Or we'll, like I said, we've been to South Carolina, South Dakota, Michigan, Nebraska. And so we'll take a smaller segment of the troupe, whatever the client sort of wants, because they do pay for it. The main objective, though, of all these is that two-hour show and putting together all the components, because we do do our own rigging, like I said. We do our own costumes. We cut our own music. Um, and, and we work on pretty much every aspect of the show. I mean, we get uh, our, we, we, we're putting up the posters. You know, we're getting in front of the TV cameras and the news and everything else, and we're promoting. So we provide all avenues uh, of a rounded experience that culminates with our, our show. And speaking of experience, we were treated to a very unique one the day we were there. They let us try the trapeze out for ourselves. I will say that we were definitely no flying steals of ISU fame. So take a breather. Yay! Woo! <laughs> okay, my arms are getting tired. All right, good Beautiful. job. Beautiful. Thank you. At any rate, we had a good time taking a swing. We also had a good time getting to know the performers and what truly makes Gamma Phi a unique organization. We have uh, really conscientious students. They, they really do form a lot of relationships. We challenge them. And I think anytime you take a group of people, a diverse group of people, you put a challenge to them, they're going to come out with some strong relationships. That's one of the biggest things that makes this a really unique organization. These kids are really good friends. They really learn how to respect one another. And um, I think it's pretty evident in how they work together and the end result at, at the end of the year. Students like Becca and Christopher Reese say that those relationships are what drew them in and kept them coming back to the circus. The people here are so much fun and the things you get to do. I mean, the things you do here, you don't get to do in any other college or any other part of your life, really. So. That's pretty much what brought me. Well, I love that I'm able to use the skills that I learned in gymnastics and kind of transfer it to something else. I knew that I probably didn't want to keep competing after high school, so this is kind of something else in a different atmosphere. And then the people you meet, it's just wonderful. It's like a second family. Both Becca and Christopher agree that the circus has helped them gain leadership skills they can take with them when they leave ISU. It's seeing that transformation that Al says is one of the best things about being part of the Gamma Phi Circus. It's really interesting and rewarding, I guess, when you see people who have developed over four to five years, and they sometimes might even be a little snotty or punkish, you know, and then they turn into like really, they get really good friends and they're very, they, they've just made a, a tremendous improvement. We, we, we see that a lot. And, and sometimes there are people that need the organization just as much or more than the organization needs them, you know, they, maybe they're a little bit shy, maybe they were, you know, and, and something kind of transforms them into, into uh, an, out, an outgoing person, but a, a more of a well-rounded just person, you know, and, and, uh, and so that's, that's pretty neat to see that kind of happen. Well, Kate, today's show marks the end of this season's adventures. We hope you enjoyed them. Until next time. Bye. Heartland Highways is made possible in part by Consolidated Communications, offering customers high-speed internet, phone service, and digital TV service packages that include high-definition channels, DVR, and hundreds of sports, movies, and music channels. More information on these services available at Consolidated.com. 
been at Illinois, and I forgot. That was great. Sorry, Fred. You know, what if, what if we moved the dog and pony show this away, just pan for me? Probably not. We, uh, we join, we join the circus. How hard is that? Illinois State University Circle, Circle. <laughs> Gamify Circus. Gamify University. Okay, Circle. We hope you enjoyed them, and until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>